World War II, the North Pacific. This is when and where observations were first made which led to the concept of mantle convection. The idea that the Earth's mantle turns over and over in continuous loops like conveyor belts. For half a century, mantle convection has become the stuff of textbooks, but there are problems, serious problems. Despite expenditure of countless millions of dollars in government grants, no conclusive evidence of mantle convection has yet been discovered. That's not surprising. In this video, you will understand why mantle convection is physically impossible. Harry H. Hess, while captaining the transport ship USS Cape Johnson, let his ship's new echo sounding equipment run continuously during long transits across the Pacific. Luckily for his crew and for the troops aboard, those sonar transmissions were not detected by any nearby Japanese submarines. For the first time, though, Hess got to glimpse lengthy profiles of the ocean floor. In the process, he discovered flat-topped submarine mountains, which he called Geos, like the first one he profiled with his ship's echo sounding equipment. Hess devised the theory of seafloor spreading to explain geos and the topography of the ocean floor. Hess imagined that geos began as volcanic mountains. He correctly guessed that as new seafloor forms at the mid-oceanic ridges, the older seafloor slides across the expanse of ocean, eventually plunging into submarine trenches. Geos, then, were submerged volcanic mountains whose tops had been gradually eroded by the action of surf before they were completely submerged beneath the waves. The observation of basalt rock being produced at mid-oceanic ridges, slowly moving across the ocean and disappearing into submarine trenches became known as seafloor spreading. Hess believed that this was just the visible part of a great conveyor belt loop caused by convection in the Earth's mantle. Later, extensive seafloor magnetic measurements showed a pattern of normal and reverse magnetic stripes. This pattern was observed symmetrically on either side of the mid-oceanic ridge, with rock ages getting progressively older the farther away from the ridge. These observations became the basis for plate tectonics theory, which adopted seafloor spreading and mantle convection as crucial components. Watch the peppercorns dragged along by the flow of salt water heated in a beaker on a regulated hot plate. This is convection. When a fluid is heated from beneath, it expands, becoming lighter, less dense than the fluid above it. This top-heavy arrangement is unstable, so fluid motions result as the fluid attempts to restore stability. The top-heavy arrangement occurs because the temperature at the bottom is hotter than at the top. This sort of observation inspired the idea of mantle convection, and it might have been valid if the Earth's mantle were a uniformly dense fluid, like the salt water, but it's not. Watch. Now I add oil that is as fluid as the salt water, but less dense. See? Heat continues to be lost from the top, but the salt water and the peppercorns stay beneath the oil. Heat from the hot plate makes the salt water at the bottom a tiny, tiny bit less dense. The thermal expansion is minuscule, not enough to make the salt water sufficiently buoyant to rise above the oil. It's not surface tension either. Watch again as I crank up the heat and give it a stir. The same thing happens again. 
the heat makes the salt water at the bottom a tiny, tiny bit less dense, but does not lower the density enough to make the heated salt water rise to the top of the oil. Not only is the Earth's mantle not a fluid, but the weight of the overburdened rock causes compression within the mantle, which increases with depth. Heating rock causes a minuscule increase in volume, hence a minuscule decrease in density, much, much less than 1%. This is far, far too little to make the mantle top heavy, and there would be problems posed as well by the heat of compression. The result is no convection at all. No mantle convection means that plate tectonics theory is wrong. But that should not be surprising. There are other problems. For example, plate tectonics is an incomplete theory which never included an energy source sufficient to power global dynamics. So, how does Earth dynamics really work? In a companion video entitled 21st Century Earth Dynamics, I describe my new complete theory called Whole Earth Decompression Dynamics, which I recently published in the scientific literature and which includes observations related to seafloor spreading, but which does not require mantle convection. Science is about discovering the true nature of Earth and Universe and sharing that knowledge with people everywhere. That's what I do. My name is Marvin Herndon. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will wish to view the companion video, 21st Century Earth Dynamics. Also, please visit understandearth.com or nuclearplanet.com for more information and references.